Hello and welcome back to Bicycle Legs and another edition of Anniversary Albums. Today we're going to be talking about albums that are having a significant anniversary in the month of December 2022. For those new to this series, when I say a significant anniversary, I'm talking about an anniversary that ends in a 5 or a 0. So 50th, 25th, 35th, 40th, that sort of thing. So again, this was another hard month to narrow it just down to 10, but I think I've got 10 really, really good albums here to talk about. So let's get started straight away with our very first one, which is having its 55th anniversary in the month of December. It was released on the 1st of December, 1967, and that is Axis Boulder's Love by the Jimi Hendrix Experience. I mean, how good is this album? I mean, the artwork on it is just so beautiful and wonderful photo of the experience in the middle there. Just such a great album. I mean, Up From The Skies, Spanish Castle Magic, If Six Were Nine, I love that song. Um, yeah, You Got Me Floating. Um, Little Miss Lover, Boulder's Love. I mean, just probably my favorite Jimi Hendrix Experience album is the next one, Electric Ladyland, but this one would be very, very close. Wonderful album. The next album we're talking about is having its 50th anniversary in the month of December. It was also released on the 1st of December, but in 1972, and that is Octopus by Gentle Giant. And there is the European cover, which was also on the Australian edition, which is, this is an Australian pressing. And then of course there was the North American one with the different artwork rather than the Roger Dean artwork on the European one. I think both artworks are really good. This is a, a die cut sleeve for those of you who might not be aware of that, but it's, it's sort of die cut around the bottle shape, which is very, very cool. Um, Octopus, a lot of people think this is the best Gentle Giant album. I don't quite agree, um, although it's one of my favourites. You can see my Gentle Giant um, Studio Albums Ranked show. I'll leave a link in the description, but you can also find it in the Studio Albums Ranked playlist. Um, this is a really great album. It's the last album as a six piece before um, Phil Shulman would leave the band and they would go on as a five piece after that. It's also the first album with John Pugwash Weathers on drums who would play with them for the rest of their career. So, I mean, so many good songs on this album too. Advent of Panurge, Raconteur Troubadour, Knots. The incredible interplay on the vocals on that song. Uh, Boys in the Band is a great rocking instrumental. Dog's Life is Funny, Think of Me with Kindness is Beautiful and River is a, a wonderful way to end out the album. Always loved that album, but uh, there's a couple of three Gentle Giant albums I just like a little bit better. There's no such thing as a really bad Gentle Giant album though, is there? So the next album we're going to have a look at is having its 45th anniversary in the month of December. It was originally released on the 6th of December 1977. Again considered one of the all-time classics by this artist, and that is Running On Empty by Jackson Brown. The first of a couple of live albums we'll be talking about today. Very different live album than most live albums, this one, because it includes all material that hadn't been on any other Jackson Brown album before. Quite a number of cover versions, um, songs that he wrote with other people. It's an interesting album. It's a different album. It was also a big commercial breakthrough for him. Um, the title track still a classic on, on classic rock radio to this day. The Road, written by Danny O'Keefe, is a song I really, really love. It's a beautiful song. Um, you Love the Thunder, Cocaine, funny. I mean, it's not the, the J.J. Kale cocaine, it's a different song. Um, Shaky Town, Love Needs a Heart, and The Load Out and Stay to End It, really, really cool. Great album. The next album we're going to have a look at is another one having its 55th anniversary in the month of December. We have a few of those this month. Uh, this one was released on the 8th of December, 1967. 
uh, a real underrated album, I think, in this band's catalogue, and that is their Satanic Majesty's Request by the Rolling Stones. A lot of people don't like the Psychedelic Stones. I think it's great. I love it. 2000 Man, of course, famously covered by Kiss, and they did a great version of it. It's also got She's a Rainbow, which was a great single. 2000 Light Years From Home, wonderful song. In Another Land, uh, Bill Wyman gets to step out and take the lead for once, writes that song. On with the show, um, sing this all together, Citadel. Just, I think this is a fun album. I really, really enjoy it. I love 60, 60 Stones. A lot of people think that from Beggar's Banquet onwards through to about Goat's Head Soup is sort of the classic Stones period. And I love that. I mean, Exile on Main Street is probably my favorite Stones album, but 60 Stones doesn't get enough love as far as I'm concerned. And I think this is a great album. The next album is having its 50th anniversary in the month of December, also released on the 8th of December, but in 1972. It's the other live album we're going to be looking at, an absolute classic of the genre, and that is Deep Purple's Made in Japan. I mean, long extended versions live, extra solos, extra jamming. Some people don't like that. I think it's great. I mean, the songs on here too. I mean, Highway Star, Child in Time, Smoke on the Water, Space Truck, and, you know. I mean, it's all classic Deep Purple stuff from that Mark II lineup and played live. And yeah, it's a pretty good recording for 1972 too. So I think it's a great album. The next album is another one having its 55th anniversary in the month of December. It was originally released on the 15th of December, 1967. And that is The Who Sell Out. I've actually got this on this double with The Who Sell Out and a quick one. That, um, yeah, I really like The Who Sell Out. I mean, it's got the sort of, you know, commercial jingles in between and, you can see the sort of concepty bits starting to come through and it's got um, the rail uh, song on it. It's got um, Can't Reach You. I mean, what else is on this album? Really good stuff. I Can See For Miles was the big hit, of course. Um, Marianne with the shaky hand. Yeah, it's a great album. Again, early Who doesn't get enough love. I think everybody thinks of the Who from Tommy onwards and some of the earlier Who doesn't get enough love, but I think this is a great album. The next album we're going to have a look at is another one having its 55th anniversary in the month of December. It was released on the 18th of December, 1967. Mine's got a quite different cover than the one that you'll probably be used to because it's a World Record Club release rather than the regular release. And that is Wild Honey by the Beach Boys. I mean, coming after um, Pet Sounds and then Smiley Smile, which was sort of the truncated version of Smile. Um, this is where Brian Wilson's starting to sort of loosen the reins, not have as much control over the Beach Boys, the other members of the band starting to have input in the songwriting and the production and all that sort of thing. But this is still a really good album. The title track is great. Um, I was made to love her. Um, I'd love just once to see you. Here comes the night. Um, it's a really good album in the Beach Voice catalog. And it's one that, again, gets quite overlooked, I think, which is a bit of a shame. Can't say that about this next album. It's definitely considered a classic in this artist's catalog. It's another album having its 55th anniversary in the month of December, originally released on the 27th of December 1967, and that is John Wesley Harding by Bob Dylan. Title track, All Along the Watchtower. I mean, one of the all-time Dylan classics, isn't it? I mean, obviously made famous by Jimi Hendrix Experience covering it, but the Dylan version is great too. And the XTC version, 
that's a really good sort of uh, sacrilegious cover version of a classic song or cover of a cover even if you think of them covering the Jimi Hendrix version um, but there's so many good songs on this album you know I dreamed I saw St Augustine and the ballad of Frankie Lee and Judas Priest um, I'll be your baby tonight down along the cove I pity the poor immigrant there's a lot of great stuff on this album Yet another album having its 55th anniversary in the month of December. Really good uh, month for 55th anniversaries. 1967 was a great year in December. Also released on the 27th of December 1967, so the same day as John Wesley Harding. A classic debut album in this case, and that is The Songs of Leonard Cohen. Of course, this has his version of Suzanne, which was made famous by, was it Judy Collins, I think? It's also got So Long Marianne, Hey That's No Way to Say Goodbye, Sisters of Mercy. I mean, there's so many just stone cold Lennon Cohen classics on this album, isn't there? One of Us Cannot Be Wrong, Winter Lady, The Stranger Song. Just, yeah. What a wonderful debut. What a way to announce yourself into the music world with an album like this. And then the last album we're going to look at today is an album having its 40th anniversary in the month of December. It was released right at the end of the year on the 30th of December 1982. And that is the ever popular tortured artist effect by Todd Rundgren. One of his more pop albums. Um, one of his shorter albums too. I mean, his albums tended to be really, really long, especially for, you know, back in the vinyl days. This one's not so long. I think it's only 30 something minutes long, whereas some of his were getting over 50 minutes long on a single disc. Hideaway, Influenza, Don't Hurt Yourself, um, Bang the Drum All Day, I always loved that song. Um, Emperor of the Highway, yeah, this is great sort of, you know, pop Todd. He did so many different things, but I really like this album. I think it's one he is not so fond of, thinks of it as a bit of a throwaway, but I think it's a great album. Anyway, that's my anniversary albums for the month of December 2022. Um, please let me know in the comments which ones of these are your favourites, which ones maybe you don't care for so much. Let me know which ones I missed, because I know there are a number that I had to leave off this list, as there always are every month. So I always love it when you let me know, because sometimes there are ones that I don't even think of, and that's really great. Um, please like, share, and subscribe. It really does help the channel out. Thank you to all the new subscribers that have had over the last couple of weeks. That's been really great too. If you're new to the channel, please go and have a look at some of my other videos. That really helps the channel out too, if you stay and watch a few other videos. I've got everything playlisted, so if you want to see some of my other anniversary album shows, there's a playlist for that. If you want to watch my studio albums rank shows, there's a playlist for that. If you want to watch my reviews, playlist for that, and so on and so on. If you want to follow me on social media, I'm at Bicycle Legs on Instagram and Twitter. On Instagram, I'm mostly posting the records I happen to be listening to at the time, as well as posting channel updates. On Twitter, I talk about anything and everything, but I am definitely trying to give that more of a music focus. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.